Hey guys, we're at uh, Western Iowa Tech today here. We got our new group of students here. And we're just uh, starting to practice and work on repairing fasteners, identification, cleaning them. And what we've done is we went and uh, tapped a hole in here and uh, put a six by one millimeter bolt in here. And just to make a test, we went ahead and over torqued the fastener to strip it. And now we're gonna do a common repair method called a hilly coil. Just the directions at right there. Okay, this is this brand, it's real popular, used throughout the industry in all applications, so a lot of different uses you guys can use this for. These are really cool tool about having some good directions if you hadn't used this, so the do-it-yourselfer can do this as well. We're going to be taking a, and putting a hilly coil in a piece of scrap aluminum with the idea that we're going to be able to torque the 6 millimeter faster back down to the common 6 to 8 foot pound torque spec that's known uh, in this industry. So. Actually, we're going to go ahead. We on the on the tap itself, it tells what drill bit we need to drill the hole to then size this appropriately. So he's going to go ahead and do that. He's going to hold that nice and straight. And Cyrus is going to loop that up for him. He kind of cleaned that up as he was going there. Use our rag here. Just get our debris out of the way. Now another thing that we like to do that's not in the directions is we like to uh, put a chamfer on the top of the hole. What that does is a chamfer or a lead-in allows the tap to start nice and square and it leaves a place that whenever you take a bolt and you have a hole that has a chamfer in it, it allows it to basically just kind of center itself there on its own before you start to thread it and it really helps with cross threading. So he's just going to do this real lightly. Just basically tap along there, create that chamfer. We don't want to make it too deep because for this helicoil design, this needs to be flush with the material. Perfect. We're going to check our work. He's got a nice little lead in here. Uh, it's really not a big deal to want to have to show it on the video. So the next step is we're going to tap this to the appropriate one that came with the kit itself. Now to do that, he's going to take and put some lube on there. One thing you never want to do is take the tap, new or used or whatnot, and put it into your grease because you use this grease on engine parts and wheels and bearings and other places. You just take a chance of putting those contaminants in here. So he's going to loop that up good. Now what that's going to do is it's going to allow the chips to catch in the tap to keep it clean while he's uh, chasing that or threading it. I'm sorry. This adapter comes with our kit with our uh, snap on tap and do, uh, tool, or excuse me, tap and die kit. Good and tight. Now what he knows, he's been trained on this already, is that he's going to apply a real good even pressure straight up and down so that he doesn't uh, start to tap that hole at an angle. Looking good. I think you will be able to go right on down. How's it feel? Good. Awesome. You notice how fast this is since it wasn't a broken fastener, it was just a stripped. If he was feeling like it was really uh, stiff or hard to uh, pull that tap through there, he could stop and go back and forth and basically rock it to pull some of that debris up into those uh, channels there. You'll notice once he gets to the right spot, it's going to be really nice and easy. There you go, he's good. We're going to take and clean this. This looks beautiful. I'm going to take and show the threads on there. Can you see that, the video? I'm going to zoom her in. I don't know. It's all the way zoomed in. Can't really What's see that? The, you can't really see the thread. Zoom it in. It is. Keep going. Oh, there we go. Okay. You can see what a perfect clean thread that is. Now that's too large. Now we put the Healy coil in. You can pull her back. We'll put the Healy coil in to bring it back to, go ahead and tighten the vise, that original 6 by one hole so that we can go back to a standard fastener. Now, uh, I'm going to come around there and we'll zoom in on this. Get focused on this Healy coil and see if that will focus for us. You can just see it. Okay. What I'm trying to point out here is this little tab that we have an insertion tool. Can you hand me the insertion tool? Good.
this is going to be threaded on here and there's a little hook or a little tab here that that is what's going to basically thread that. It catches right here and then we're going to thread that into that hole. Okay, so I'll go back here. Guys, the controversy here is, do you Loctite this? Do you not Loctite it? Depends on your application, what you're going to do. I'm going to tell you this. If you do Loctite it, this is going to be stronger than it was to begin with already. If you do this properly, this is not coming out. If you do choose to Loctite it, some of the, the uh, downsides to that is that Loctite is going to spill out of those threads and come into the new threads, and now your fastener is not going to want to go down there. You're going to have to chase it. And being how you're putting a brand new set of threads in there, the idea of chasing them isn't exactly ideal. Not the end of the world, but you definitely would need to do that. If you force this bolt through this with dried Loctite on there, what's going to happen is the very first time you go take it out, you're going to pull the helicoil right out with it. Make sense? And when, as you pull the helicoil out, there's a chance that it could spring or damage the threads, and now you can't go any larger. When you go to do this, you usually only have one chance. Once you screw it up after a helicoil, you're having to replace whatever part that you were working on. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if you do put Loctite, you want to put the bolt in right away? It, well, if, if it's an application that requires Loctite, that'd be fine. But the, the negative side of that, though, is that when you go to take that out, that Loctite might potentially bring the helicoil out, too. So you're just better off to let it dry, chase it, not with a tap, but with a thread chaser, just a thread restoration chaser, get it, get it where it's back new again, and then just do whatever procedure was originally you know, uh, described in the service manual. If they described a, a Loctite, put a Loctite on it. If they describe an oil or a grease or anti-seize or anything else, then go back to that at that time. Make sense? You probably create yourself more grief by just putting that bolt in for the next mechanic or whatnot. Okay, so we've uh, tapped ourselves to that size. Now, according to the directions in these, we're going to take this like so. I'm going to see if I have the right uh, socket here. These are called tap sockets. They're really super handy here. And this one, unfortunately, is only working on taps. Because it had that square edge on there, I thought that we were going to be good to go. So I'm going to take and get a uh, small uh, driver here. Press it wrench. Press wrenches on this wrench. I have a smaller one I'm going to grab. Thought. Thread it by hand first, but then that should be good for you to be able to get done. Okay. Now, what he's going to do with this is since this is a smaller diameter one, he has to make sure and put the tab facing down, and he basically can load it in the tool like so, come through here, put his finger on the end of this here. Okay. And it's actually wanting to start, it's going to start threading it in here. He's going to push this against the hole and then start to thread it in. If it feels like it's a problem, quit. If we need to, what we're going to do is start over with a new coil versus damaging or forcing it through those threads. Does that make sense? So go ahead and try it by hand first. You're going to just eyeball it over there. Yep. flush to here first. Here's your uh, wrench. It's going to take a little bit of effort on there because what it's doing is it's taking that coil and it's collapsing it into the into the correct diameter for this. Just stay still here and just rotate with that now. trying to do is see when I can, okay, we're off here, okay, keep going, now what he's doing, let's stop right there, let's unthread it, 
Go ahead and just take it. You do it by hand. It'll come up by hand now. Remember, this is just a guide to help it from unspringing and to actually protect it a little bit as it goes in there. Now, remember how we created that chamfer in there? Okay. He just needs to go like another maybe half turn. Why don't we uh, see if we can get the uh, camera up here? We don't really need the vice anymore. Can you zoom in right there and actually see how that's raised up? Real blurry. Oh, there it is. If you tap it the last time, it'll usually autofocus again. Good? Okay, this is just raised up just a hair. So go ahead and thread that. You can do it without the, you don't even need the guide anymore. Stop, question things. So, so far today, we've um, 
uh, created a hole, stripped the hole, repaired the hole with the helicoil kit, and that's how you do it. How would you uh, remove that locking tab on that helicoil if it was in a blind hole? What I'd do there is I would take a punch or a small chisel, and I would take, and I, because the helicoil usually is not the length of the entire hole, so I would take and I would punch it down. And remember how I showed you how it has the little severed edge on it so it's meant to break? Then go underneath with a hook. We have these in a 90 degree hook. It'd be hard in the small a diameter of a hole. You might have to take a nail and bend a nail in the vise or something to create yourself a little custom hook. And then pull it up. Then knock it back down and pull it up. And eventually that'll just break and pop off. Then you can either tip your part over or get that extra piece out. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Any other questions? All right. That's it.